Hey church, my name is Julia Potter and today we're going to be diving into 2 John. Now I specifically want to take a look at verses 5 and 6 where John says, I am not writing you a new command but one we have heard from the beginning. I ask that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands, talking about Jesus. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. Now this is simply a reminder of the greatest commandment that Jesus points out in Matthew 22. If you look back at that chapter, it's a moment where some experts in the law are trying to trap Jesus. They're constantly trying to get him to trip up on his words and say something so that they may persecute him and turn their fellow Jews against Jesus. So they ask him, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus simply says, in all his wisdom, the greatest commandment is this, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. Now sometimes that can seem kind of easy, but sometimes that is pretty difficult. If you're like me, the word love had a pretty surface level meaning to it while I was growing up. I mean, I loved my family, I loved my friends, but from a worldly perspective, that was my focus. Uh, Valentine's Day, rom-coms, heart-shaped candies, simple things like that. The word love didn't have a lot of depth to it for me. But one year, not too long ago actually, I remember my boss was challenging our team to ask God for a word of the year, asking God, what's something that I can grow in this year, something that you want to challenge me in? And I remember getting the word love. And I was honestly really annoyed because to me it felt like a cookie cutter, cliche, girly word. I was in my first serious relationship and I just felt like this is so predictable, but okay. And boy, was I in for a treat that year. Because on one hand, yes, I was in a serious relationship and I ended up getting engaged and got married the next year. But on the other hand, God really convicted me in how I really wasn't loving people like Jesus was. I wasn't loving those who had hurt me and who had hurt my family. I wasn't loving everyone. Now, if you're a believer, we are called to live above the standard of the world. The world says, don't love the people who hurt you. If they hurt you, cut them loose and leave them hanging high and dry. But as Christians, we are called to love like Jesus loves. And Jesus, when he was on this earth, he loved every single person that he came in contact with. He loved the people who persecuted him. He loved the people who put him on the cross. He paid the ultimate sacrifice for every single person, no matter who they were. And that, had, that included the people who um, betrayed him, such as Judas. And we're called to do the exact same thing, but because we're called to look like Jesus. Christian means Christ follower, follow in his footsteps. So I challenge you, love everyone. That year was a hard year for me to learn that, which obviously is why the Lord gave me that word, funny. It was a year where he brought up a lot of heartache for me, where I was reminded of times that people had hurt me, had attacked my character, and he revealed to me that I was withholding a lot of bitterness. He also was reminding me of moments where people had attacked the character of my family, had done terrible things to the people that I care about, and I was just filled with all this rage and anger and hatred. And I realized, wow, this is an aspect of my life, a part of me that looks nothing like Jesus because I was not loving them the same as I was loving the people around me. And I remember a passage that really challenged me that God brought to me that year. It's in chapter, it's in Luke chapter six. Um, and it's the passage where Jesus is talking about if someone strikes you across the face, turn the other cheek and offer it as well. I've never really loved that passage. That's a hard one for me to swallow. But if you keep reading in verse 32, he takes it even further. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. I remember reading that and it was like a gut punch to me. I was only loving those who were easy to love. And that's not like Jesus at all. 
Even the world loves the people who are easy to love, but I am called to love those who might not be all that nice to me. And then later on it says in verse 35, but love your enemies and do what is good and lend expecting nothing in return. So not only are we called to love our enemies, we are called to do it expecting nothing in return, expecting no reciprocation of the love. They might continue to be rude and terrible to you, but you are called to love them just the same. So I encourage you, take some time with Jesus today and ask God, what is in me that doesn't look like you? Who am I having a hard time loving like Jesus loves? Who, why am I having all this bitterness and all this anger towards this particular person? Please show me how I can change that. You will be shocked in what he will reveal to you and he will help you in that process. You just have to ask him and invite, and invite him into that. So go out and walk in love and be a reflection of Christ to those around you today.